Hey, JP here, and welcome to another awesome episode of The Wolf's Den. I am here in The Wolf's Den right now, and I have an awesome guest today, someone I know for many, many years. Uh, extraordinary marketer in the world of traditional marketing, meaning TV, infomercials, things like that. And then over the years, he's pivoted with the times and mastered the art of online marketing as well. And he's someone I respect because he's been there and done it all. He's got great insight into what will sell, what will not sell, how to build a brand, and also when it's time to move on from something and not get caught up in your own ego that you're somehow going to make it work, even though everything is turning against you, the tide is going out the wrong way. You know, they always say a rising tide lifts all ships. Well, a falling tide causes all ships to sink. And that's not the sort of place you want to be when you're trying to build a business. So before we get started, very quick, I want to just share a couple of things that are going on right now in my own business. I think will be helpful to you. Just how you could look at what I'm doing right now and bring it to your own business. And I was just on Fox News and I was interviewed by Bill Hemmer, a great journalist, great newscaster. And we were talking about my new company, Straight Line Hiring, which is where I take people who are either beginning salespeople or some experience, but I train them for a specific company and then I place them at that company. In other words, I get orders from very large companies and smaller companies too, people that are looking to grow their sales forces to scale quickly and I go out and find the perfect salespeople for them and then I train them in that company's sales process and their scripting and I deliver this salesperson, usually five, 10, 20 at a time or a lot more sometimes, and the results I've been getting have been phenomenal. Now, the reason I bring this up is because I went into this business in response to the pressures I was facing because of COVID-19. I was an international speaker doing most of my business around the world, but in person. So even in the United States, I was doing it in person in seminars. And it's a great business for many, many years. It did really, really well. And suddenly, I'm basically out of business. Not basically, I was out of business. The world shut down. I couldn't go anywhere, right? And at that point in time, I was faced with a very, very tough decision. You know, should I fire a lot of people and really downsize? And I had to let go of some people, which I didn't like, but I held on to most of my staff. Thankfully, the PPP loan came in time and I was able to use that money and I pivoted. I came up with a different business model that was in the world of hiring. I saw what was going on. I saw that. There was a falling tide, almost a tsunami-like tide, going out, taking all of my speaking jobs with it. So it was, yeah, I'm an international speaker. Not a good business to be in when the world is shut down and no one can travel, no one can assemble in large groups. Same way if you're a restaurant owner, well, that's pretty tough too, right? So what do you do? Well, I mean, I had to make a tough choice. And ultimately, I said, you know what? I could wait for it to come back and try to hold on. Or I could say, you know what? Okay, fair enough. That business is not the right model anymore, but what model works for my skill sets and what would be in this case, the rising tide to lift all ships? Well, in my case, I said, wow, unemployment's just gone through the roof, yet companies that are growing, they're always looking for scale salespeople, always. They always want to train salespeople. So I said, you know what? I think it's time to go into the recruiting business. And that was my pivot. And the moment I did that, it just took off like a rocket. Now, it wasn't easy. It was difficult, a lot of long hours, a lot of repurposing, retraining of internal staff. But meanwhile, we've been able to go from, you know, a relatively small company with 30 or 40 employees to over 100 employees. And in addition to that, we've been able to place over 1,300 people at various jobs. And our goal this year is 10,000. We'll probably blow through that. The point is, is that no matter what's happening in your business right now, you have to just, you know, at these certain times when things are not quite right, you got to take that sober look, that 10,000 view, that aerial view and look down and say, okay, you know, I understand I'm emotionally attached to what I've done, but maybe it's time to make a change because what used to work won't work anymore. Ask yourself that question. Look at your business. Look at your job, look at the direction of your life and ask yourself in a post COVID world where the rules of the game have changed, they just have, am I in the right place or the wrong place? Am I heading in the right direction or the wrong direction? I swim with the tide or against the tide. 
Is the tide dropping out from under me, causing me to sink with it? Or am I getting raised up as the tide flows higher and higher? If you're in the online education world, guess what? You got a rising tide. If you're delivering seminars in person, you got a falling tide. Think about that. No matter what business you're in, no matter what job you have, take a good hard look at it and say it's never too late to change directions. I always believe when it comes to making money as an entrepreneur or even just a success-oriented individual, there are two things you have to know how to do. And the first one is how to fail elegantly. How do you go into business? How do you exist in the workplace? And if you're wrong, if you go into a business, you take a job and it's wrong, it's not working, you're not making money, your business is failing around you. If things aren't working, well, guess what? You want to minimize the amount of money you lose, the amount of time you lose, and then maximize on the lessons that have been learned from this failure. And then on the flip side of the equation, that's failing out. What about the other side, which is called succeeding wildly? What do you do when the shit is right? What do you do when the rising tide is lifting up your ships and all ships around you? What do you do? How do you make that even work for you faster, better, stronger? How do you take a small company that's working well, make it into a large company? How do you take a large company, make it into a massive multinational? How do you add a zero onto your income? The rules for failing elegantly, it's playing defense while you gather intelligence are very different than succeeding widely where you're paying offense. You have to know how to do both to succeed at the highest level. Think about that. I don't want to get into particulars now. I have content on my website about this. I have free content. I have paid content. But most of all, I just want you to think hard about this, right? And take a good hard look at your life, where you are, what you're doing, what's going on, and make sure that you're not in a position where the tide is sinking around you and you're going down with all the other ships. No matter how hard you try to climb up, the floor is sinking out from beneath you. Think about that. And if you're in the right position and things are going well and you're being lifted up by a tide, then you know what? Time to make hay when the sun shines. Add that zero on to come scale, grow. You're in the right place at the right time. Make hay when that sun is shining, all right? And with that, we're going to take a short break right now to hear from one of our awesome sponsors. I think one of them might even be me, but some great companies that I really love and represent. And we'll be right back with an awesome podcast that you're going to really love. All right, here's the deal. As America gets back to work, you need every possible advantage to succeed in the new economy. The bottom line is that smart companies run on NetSuite by Oracle. This is the world's number one cloud-based business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, your HR, your inventory, e-commerce, and everything else you need all in one spot. And let me just tell you something. If you're not on top of your numbers, then your numbers are going to be on top of you. Whether you're doing a hundred million a year, hundreds of millions a year, a million a year, NetSuite lets you manage every penny with precision. Bottom line, you have the ability to compete with anyone, work from anywhere, and run your whole company right from your phone. You want to join 20,000 companies, 20,000, who trust NetSuite to make that happen. Listen, NetSuite surveyed hundreds of business leaders and assembled a playbook of the top strategies they're using right now as America reopens for business. You need to watch this. You need to see this. So receive your free guide. It's called Seven Action Businesses Need to Take Now and schedule your free product tour at netsuite.com slash wolf. That's netsuite.com slash wolf. Listen, you know I don't endorse a lot of companies, right? This is one I believe in. You want to check this out. Listen, Larry Ellison, Oracle, business genius, NetSuite, best of breed software by a country mile. So if you're in business, and you want to at least check out these seven strategies that you need to take right now, actions. Come on, what's the worst that could happen? At least go check this out. See what the smartest business people in the world are doing right now to maximize this rocket ship up we're about to witness after coronavirus. You need to check this out. So again, one more time, NetSuite, 
dot com slash wolf that's netsuite.com slash wolf you want to do this right now all right ready for the future of banking check out aslo.com a-z-l-o it's a frictionless way to open up a new account run your business invoice it does everything there's no minimum balance no overdraft charges check out aslo a-z-l-o.com slash wolf Check it out right now. It's a great solution for banking. All right, so Kevin Harrington, great guy, world-class entrepreneur. There's one thing I want to talk to you about in particular. It's not all the stuff you've done on Shark Tank. It's not the stuff that you've done in infomercials. You basically invented the infomercial, right? I want to talk to you about a recent success you've had, which is with the energy drink Celsius, which I've used myself. It's great, right? Tell me about how that got started and uh, where you are right now with that. So... Uh, you know, uh, Celsius was a great concept. A uh, buddy of mine that uh, he and I go back 25 years, one day he called me and said, hey, I just took over as CEO of this little startup called Celsius. And um, uh, he said, it, you know, we've got this. This was the magic. And, and in my world, I always look for a product that is unique enough such that there's no other product that solves the, the problem it solves in a similar fashion. Now, energy drinks, they solve the problem of lack of energy. But Red Bull, you get a little energy. Monster, you get a little energy. Celsius has seven clinical studies that prove that you actually, one can of Celsius burns 140 calories in your body, whether you just sit or do nothing, right? So, and that's a clinical claim that they were able to make. So it started off getting very good reception in the, in the fitness world, Gold's Gym took it on, et cetera, et cetera. But in the beginning, the retail stores, you know, the, the 7-Elevens and the Publix and the Kroger's and, and all the, you know, the CVS's of the world were like, look, we're loaded with all the other monsters and Red Bulls and all that. And, and, and you know, why should we take Celsius? But um, it, it got a really good following in the world of fitness enthusiasts and, and that type of thing. And so uh, the company, I, I got involved uh, like about five, six years ago, I got involved in, and they had a little bit of activity that had gone on prior to that. But at that point, it was a pink sheet stock. Um, it was when I met the, the, uh, the, the main investors, a guy named Carl DeSantis, Carl's an amazing guy. He, he was involved in, uh, in a couple of exits. And, and I think he's probably uh, now uh, with Celsius and others now probably a billionaire. But Carl DeSantis was Rexall Sundowner, if you'd ever heard of that company. Sure, of course. Of course, yeah. So make a long story short, um, you know, it, it, we, we, I joined the board, got involved in, in, in the beginning. That was an MLM company, Rexall Sundown. Exactly. That, that was Carl yeah. DeSantis, right. So, so Carl, he, he called me, Jerry David, the CEO, and Jerry's my buddy, and said, come on down and, and see what you can do to help us out. So, um, look, at, at the end of the day, the product was good, it had a great taste, and, um, and so, we, you know, we, we started uh, putting the, the product out there, and the focus that in the early days we, we, we wanted to go after was direct to the consumer, you know, and, and this is not just in, I don't mean in retail stores, I'm talking about channels having fitness influencers out there pitching, talking, hawking, whatever they do, right? And in some cases, believe it or not, some of these people, they'll do it just to do it, just to get a little track record. Others will do it for cases of product. Um, when you get into celebrity, so I went down and uh, I'll never forget, I went in to, uh, to have a meeting with Flo Rida. I pull up, his driveway, he's got a gold Bugatti sitting in his driveway, right? He's like, okay, I guess we're going to have a little fun with this meeting, you know? So Flo's, a, he was like, I love this product. I mean, and he's a, he's a fitness buff. So, so Flo is, he's shooting videos for us, putting it out to his 26 million followers. And I've done a ton of stuff with Kris Jenner and Kim Kardashian and all them. And, and so Flo is like, hey, can I get some of my, my uh, folks to, that, that, that follow me to also get involved? And I said, well, who do you have in mind? I said, oh, Khloe Kardashian. She'd love to do this probably too. So, I mean, I'm talking for product. We were getting some big folks. Now, Flo, we did a little deal with um, and, and papered him up with a couple of shares. But um, at the end of the day, we started taking off. And then uh, we brought some investors in. 
we get, we, we, we got a really uh, Lee Kai Shing out of Hong Kong. I don't know if you know that investor, but he's one of the wealthiest guys in China. And his model is pretty cool because he owns chains of, of he has a retail store chain. So he's like, look, I'll invest a bunch of money. I think it was 16 million his first round uh, Lee Kai Shing put in. And, um, and, and, and that came through my connections. Uh, you know, so I was out bringing in deals and bringing in celebrities and uh, finance guys. So Lee Kai Shing came in with, with about 16 million, but all, it, so he got stock at like a, a dollar something a share. Cause it, we went from 20 cents up to about a buck. Then we raised money. Lee Kai Shing's in, Oh, now the stock's three bucks. And, um, and, and then, but he had, he wanted the rights to Asia. So, uh, and, and, and I say Asia, Hong Kong and China and a few other markets. And so, so it, we, we, he brought the former head of Red Bull Asia, had left Red Bull Asia to b- come in and run uh, Celsius Asia. So, right. so we had U.S. efforts with Celsius Asia, and then we, we kicked off a, a European uh, uh, um, effort also in the country of Sweden, which is, is less than 10 million people from zero, we build a $40 million business, which is pretty mm-hmm. crazy because that was, you know, I mean, in the, in the entire United States, we, we, we were a hundred and some million at, 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 at this point now, but 40 million was, was happening just in Sweden, but it's a very fit country and, and all that. So make a long mm-hmm. story short, you know, take us all the way from five years ago to a few months ago, May, we're sitting, the stock is in the four to five dollar range, but it, you know, and now stores are closing down, can't get the product, but people, this had, had a cult following, right? Mm-hmm. And, um, and so make a long story short, boom, fitness influencers kicked in big time. And, um, and this is, this is a good, it's always good. I'm a direct to the consumer guy, right? This is what I've been doing for almost 40 years. And so with, with direct to the consumer, with fitness influencers, sales were actually increasing. I think we were up like close to 150% during the COVID. And that's when- it So how active, how active are you involved in the company? Are you involved in a day-to-day basis or just more as an advisor? No, just, just a, a board advisor level. Is this one of the biggest hits you've had in your life? Um, you know, I, I would, I would say probably near the top. I mean, one of my first big, the the first like big hit, the first 10 million bucks I made, uh, was back in the early nineties. Um, I, I, I put a a bunch of, uh, effort into, I was in the infomercial business. I merged into a shell. Uh, we were a dollar stock and we went from a hundred million to 300 million to 500 million, of course the stock. And I, I had millions of shares in this deal also. Um, this stock, national media, if you remember. Of course I do. NMCO, NMCO. Yeah, there you go. So we took that to 20 bucks a share. And, um, you know, that, that was a nice payday also. But I, I, I got involved with a company called Your Travel Biz back in, uh, oh, that was probably about 12 years ago. I got 2 million shares at a dollar, took it to $18. Uh, so, I, I, I mean, I... So what's the secret? So what's the secret for the average person though that's listening to this, right? So like you know, they listen to this, they're like, all right, well, you know, that doesn't really help me very much. I can't do what he does. So you know, what's how does someone actually um, listen to what you're saying, and how do they act on that and sort of do what you do? What's the secret? You know, how does someone use that information that you're saying right now versus just hearing an interesting story? How do they do it? Yeah. So I mean, what what I tell people because. I was stuck. The, 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 the first scenario, I talked about national media, right? Um, we, uh, that, that company, I, uh, the predecessor company, I, I started this company called Quantum. We built it to 50 million a year. Was there a guy named Abe Solomon involved in that deal? Abe something? Exactly. Abe Solomon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Abe yeah. Solomon, okay. So, so I, I bought the shell from Abe, took this thing over, and, and so that the stock was, was, was like a buck a share and we were at 50 million in sales. We needed some financing and I was not a sophisticated finance guy, right? And, the, and, and I'm still not a sophisticated finance guy, made, made some money over the years, but I, I, I go back to when I was, and, and this is now 
um, you know, back in the early 90s. So I hired a, a mentor to help me go raise some capital. And this guy was a former bank president and retired. He came in and he saw what we were doing. I had 40,000 orders that we'd already had sitting in our hands, but we didn't have the capital to go make the inventory. And this is 30 some years ago, right? So uh, this guy says, Kevin, he said, you know, you don't know how to talk to the banks. He said, I I'm gonna help you go get the money. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the 3 million bucks you're trying to get from a bank that's already turned you down. So I showed him who we'd already been to. And three months later, I had 3 million bucks sitting in my bank account from a line of credit from the bank. We went from 50 million to 500 million then. So where this applies to the average guy maybe is you've got a business, you're growing it, you don't know how to finance it, you need money, you need this, you need that. You gotta bring in mentors. And, and, and I've, I've used great mentors along the way. Um, that the first mentor was a bank guy that came in and wow, we got the first line of credit then we got a $10 million line of credit from chemical bank. And I've never had problems with the banking world ever since. And, and of course now we've raised that we've, we've, we've made enough money that we don't have to use other people's money. If we don't want to, we still like to though. It's always good to have bank financing. Got it. So what, what do you think like in, in terms of the, um, the, the average person, like, you know, who wants to become successful, where do you see the opportunities right now in terms of like direct, you know, all the direct consumer now is online basically. Right. So you think, you know, what do you think of all these like, you know, you know, business opportunity things you see for like, uh, you know, be your own, you know, drop shipping expert and all that. What do you think about all the stuff that's going on right now? Is there real value there in some of these offers? Are they mostly meant to separate people from their money? You know, I think most of them are meant to separate you from your money, to be honest with you. But um, I'll say this. When COVID first hit, and I remember in, in March, um, when I finally realized this was going to devastate the, you know, the, the world, the travel. I mean, I, I did last year before COVID, I did 80 events. I traveled 200 days around the Me world. Too. You know, you know the feeling. You know, I'd, I'd see here you going this way and I'm going the other way, right? But, mm -hmm. um, and all of a sudden, everything got canceled. <laughs> Unbelievable, man. I'm, I'm sure all yours too. But so now, but what happened was all these unemployed people are sitting at home. And so, so what are they doing? They're watching television and they're on the internet. So the usage levels were just screaming, going through the roof. It, unbelievable. At the same time, the advertiser levels were dropping down to, to, to really very low levels because if you got a restaurant and you're, and you're closed, you're not advertising, okay? The concert promoters are not doing concert, they're not advertising. So that window of opportunity, that Delta was what we focused on for the last five, six months. We were taking campaigns that had an $18 cost per order, dropping them to five bucks because th there was some great opportunities. I don't know if you saw one of the projects um, that um, it, it, I've followed for years because Carl Deichler is a buddy of mine. He started uh, Beachbody and Carl actually worked inside, you know, our, our business back in the day, quantum marketing, national media, the old Abe Salomon deal. Right. And so right. Carl, what did he do when COVID first hit? He's like, I'm giving away $8,000 worth of, worth of videos for free. Sign up right now. It was all about customer acquisition. And so that's, that, that's the key is so many people don't understand that, that that's really what drives, you know, that that's what drives the engine is, is, is customer acquisition. So let's dig deeper into that. What is, so let's talk about, you know, how do you acquire customers in a business? So are we talking about, let's start with online. So you think the idea of giving away free stuff or free reports or free information, is that the primary means you use to attract customers? Um, not necessarily that, that that's called a, a you know, a, a lead magnet. So yes, I mean, that's one way, um, given, you know, giving away some content, you know, can give people like a warm and fuzzy, you're not beating them on the head to try to close them. But a we sell a lot of stuff that's in a, in a, in a lower price point. So let me, uh, if, if I could, I might have a product here. I can just grab, just show you Great. the type of thing. There we go. Um, so I think I got one in here somewhere, uh, or maybe I don't. Um, so the, um, the, 
uh, we have a, a little a little uh, product. I found it. There we go. This this little product. This guy came to me a couple of years ago and said, "This is going to be your next grand slam." I'm going to talk about customer acquisition here in a second, but this is a two-step eyeglass cleaner. First of all, the little brush comes out, get all the dust off because you don't want to rub the dust in and scratch the lenses. And then it goes back and then it opens up and it's a double sided carbon cleaning system that cleans both sides of your glasses simultaneously. Okay. So this product, it's $14. I want three. <laughs> there you go. Thank you. Okay. Now it also electrostatically recharges inside the charging case comes back out clean and ready to use over 500 times. So this guy had sold a couple thousand of these, you know, he tried to get it on QVC, not having any luck. So we focus now on putting the whole campaign together. So what we did is it's, it's $14.95. We went on Facebook and Instagram and we put together some user style videos, authentic videos of people Actually, you know, guy driving a motorcycle, he's got his glasses, they're all dirty, gets off, cleans them, magical transformation, boom, okay? The videos go out on Facebook, we're buying ads, and the first tranche, we spent a thousand bucks, brought in five thousand dollars in sales, okay? So we spent five grand, 25, we spent 25 to one. So this was cranking, but the, the one of the difficulties, we were still doing a very low average order value because it's a $15 item. So an affiliate group came by, it's people were buying one or two, but an affiliate group came by and said, hey, look, if you can pay us 20 bucks an order, we can sell a ton of these, you know, maybe 10, 15,000 pieces a day. So I'm like, how do you give 20 bucks for a $15 item? Well, that's when we focused I look at two things. What is your customer acquisition cost? And what is the lifetime value of that customer? Or what is the average order value? Our average order value was in the 20s. But what we focused on then was getting it up and up and up. So we said, all right, you need them. You, need, you said you'll buy three. That's exactly what we focused on. Put one in your glove compartment, one, up, one by your bed, one by your, night, your reading table in the living room. Buy three, get two free. We got the average order value on this up to $53. Went back to the affiliate group. We gave them 20 bucks in order because $20 out of 53, this, you know, we can make this for the right price. Bang, we were getting 12,000 orders a day just from the affiliate group on top of what we were doing. This product is now a $100 million success that we've had in the last 18 months. So it's, it's, it's focusing on those two numbers. And this, that goes back to my roots of infomercials and direct response is, you know, Tony Little's Gazelle was $400. Well, I could make it for 100 and I was buying media for 100 at a $200, $200 gross profit. That product ended up doing over a billion dollars because of, of the customer acquisition and the lifetime value. Mm -hmm. All right, so in 2020, every business in the country is learning to adapt day by day. But why aren't banks adapting? I'm talking about all the ridiculous, unnecessary fees, having to get in your car, physically drive to a location just to get started. I mean, as a business owner, that's the last thing I've got time to do, especially right now. And that's what I like about this company, Aslo. Aslo is totally frictionless business banking. Because if you're like me, you want things done fast. And as it lets me do it, everything from my phone, it just takes 10 minutes to get started. And you don't have to leave your house and go to the bank. It's an instant solution to start banking right now. It handles invoicing, transfers funds. It's faster, cheaper than any solution out there that I know of. Aslo is a free business checking account with no minimum balance, no fees. Unlike other banking options, there is no minimum deposit required. You'll never be charged maintenance or overdraft fees, a huge thing, by the way. And there's no ridiculous phone system. It feels like it's designed just to waste your time. As it was owned by BBVA USA, a member of the FDIC, so they've got a great team behind them as well. I've got to tell you, as a business owner myself, the ease of use, the fact they never ding me with ridiculous fees, the simple invoicing, and as those customer service team that actually understands people's needs, I, I got to say that 
It is a top notch service. I don't get that at normal bank and you won't either. So again, sign up right now with no minimum deposit at Aslo, A-Z-L-O, Aslo.com slash Wolf, W-O-L-F. That's Aslo.com slash Wolf. And also when you sign up, get a free copy of Aslo's Small Business Starter Guide. Again, that's spelled A-Z-L-O dot com slash wolf. Sign up now with a free small business starter guide and there's no minimum deposit. That's aslo.com slash wolf. So what's, you know, in terms of, you know, infomercials, I mean, are they still, are they still really on TV? Are they, are they still out there? I don't really watch much TV anymore. It, you know, and, and that's part of the challenge. So as I was building infomercials and, and the, the, that whole world um, as seen on TV, I owned Asina TV Inc. and Asina TV.com. And by the way, do, the dot com, a lot of people don't know this, but the actual logo as seen on TV, nobody owns. But I tied up the IP, Asina TV Inc. and Asina TV.com. And so, uh, you know, we were, we were doing 20 million a year on Asina TV.com with not one dime of advertising. Why? Because all the I've seen, all the I've seen TV people were doing the advertising and people would Google, oh, I saw this as seen on TV last night. Boom, they end up on my site. But I'm sitting here built, you know, and we had public companies and we're building this little I've seen TV thing into a, into a, it was just a small part of our business because it was just the internet side. But I started seeing the handwriting on the wall. TV viewership has dropped by over 50% in the last 10 years. Right. And they're on the internet, they're on Facebook, they're on uh, you know, Netflix, et cetera. So um, I, I, about seven years ago, I said, I'm out. I sold all my Asina TV assets. I sold .com, uh, Inc., et cetera, and, um, and, and just moved into the digital world because I saw what was happening. I saw it was, this was gonna be the wave of the future. So, um, I, and I went to a mentor called, do you know Russell Brunson? Yes, of course. He was on my podcast uh, two weeks ago. He's a good guy. So yeah, yeah. seven seven years ago, before ClickFunnels, I called because I, I got the buzz. Who's the, who are the digital guys out there, right? So I called Russell Brunson. I'm like Russell, forget as seen on TV. I, I, I see there's a new game in town here, and so I've been focusing on the digital world for the last seven years. And uh, many of the uh, my old infomercial guys, they're still trying to produce a few shows. The, the infomercials as 30 minute shows, they're still out there, but they don't go well onto the internet. So really it's more the short form side of the business, one minute, two minute spots. Those are still playing well, but at the end of the day, it's become a very expensive business model. It, if, if you wanna launch this product in the world of as seen on TV, with media, inventory, et cetera, you gotta have about 10 million bucks per campaign to do it the right way. Otherwise, it's not gonna sell through and you just get it all back. And that's what's happened to that industry. You know, like if you ship the Walgreens, they'll, they'll, they'll order 100,000 pieces. If it only sells 20,000, they pay per scam, okay? So if they sell 20 and they didn't got 80 left, you're getting those 80 back. Just consignment sales, huh? Consignment sales. It's like too dangerous a business. You want to be, I mean, there's guys doing well in that business still. There's a couple, I don't know if you know the Kubani family, AJ, Andy, and Chuck. The three of those guys have really done an amazing job in that world of Asina TV, but um, it's still, it's, it's getting tougher and tougher and tougher. And, and that's why I moved over to digital and having a, a, a good success on our side. Got it. So what do you think the future of this whole thing is? Where is it? What do you see in five years from now? What's the trend right now? Well, a good question. I mean, there's so many, um, so many uh, streaming services that just keep popping up. I mean, Disney plus they're at a hundred million subscribers already. I mean, it's amazing. Um, so, I mean, but th these are more content, you know, co you know, co content plays. I, I believe that as, as every new kind of network, like when, when, um, you know, F Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, there's opportunities in all these new channels to be able to cut deals and, and buy time, buy 
buy space. Um, and so, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it, I think our, our, our motto is just follow the eyeballs. They used to be on TV. Now they went to, to internet sites. So we, as we follow the eyeballs, then we tailor the messaging to the, the network. So some of these networks are younger. And so like, if you're gonna go TikTok, you, you, you can't be selling you know, a, a $400 Tony Little Gazelle, right? It's not gonna work. You gotta, you know, lower priced, easier to ship type products. And, sure. and so that's the other thing that's happened in the market I mean, in the old days, we used to do the Jack LaLanne juicer and the Gazelle and George Foreman and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, when you're shipping around the world, it's, it's become a global business. So, you know, we're, we're shipping this in, you know, 30 plus countries. So um, it's a lot tougher to ship a, a, a 120 pound Gazelle around the world because the freight right. kills you. So, right. so sure. I think we've learned about the, the kinds of items that we want to get involved with. And, and this again is on the, on the product side. Um, and so, um, you know, we, we just, we constantly keep our eye out for new places where there's new markets, new opportunities. And uh, at the end of the day, it, it sort of boils down to, we have an allowable amount of money to spend per order. And once we communicate with these networks that we're willing, we're willing to spend millions, but it's got to, come in at $15 cost per customer, or whatever that number is, you know, sometimes they sure. make it work and you know, it's a negotiation on a, on a month to month basis. Got it. And in terms of you personally, how have you found like over the years in terms of balancing out, you know, um, the work with your personal life, do you find yourself being, you, you, would you consider yourself a lifestyle entrepreneur or more of like just a full on, you know, you're out there, like work, your work is your life sort of thing. What, what do you, Think you which category are you in? You think? Hey, that's a good question. I think um, I, I'm I'm slowing up in my older years now. I mean, I'm I'm going to be 64 in October, and I'm I'm like you look phenomenal, by the way. I appreciate that. Thank you. It's a, it's, a, it's a grind, though, man. I mean, I've I've been out grinding, and I think with you know I I I got the the quick little run on Shark Tank for a couple seasons that you know helped a little bit to build my brand a little, and 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 then you get caught up in the bullshit of, Oh, come speak here and come speak there. It's like, you know, Oh, okay. I'll, you know, send me, send me some money and send me a, a ticket and I'll, I'll come to Berlin and speak, but it's a day to get there, a day there, a day home. And I did that for, for a couple of years, but I'm glad COVID kind of forced me to put an end to it because I really, I mean, I didn't need the money, mean. but yeah. it's like, I don't know. They want, they want me in Berlin. I'm going to go. You get the ego stroke, you know? So, so <laughs> I'm, I'm actually kind of cutting back a little bit. And I think probably over, over the, over the next, uh, when we come out of, I don't know if we'll ever come out of COVID, but I, could, <laughs> I think the world's going to be a lot different. Right. Um, but, but I, I would call, I would have called myself a serial entrepreneur because, uh, you know, I've launched and, and primarily in the product business prior to the last five years, you know, I'm, I sit on a few boards of public companies and I'm and, and, and advisory boards of another couple dozen companies. And that, that's kind of my business model now. I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to have to run the day to day of anything. I don't want to just be able to kind of give some advice and help raise some capital for some guys if mm. they need it and do what I need Got to it. do, but in, in, a, in a little more peaceful fashion. You know? What do you think of the uh, cannabis space? Are you in that? I invested in a company called Canapreneur. Uh, we've we've raised uh, we've 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 raised eighty million, and uh, we're, we're we're going full on. I, I'm I'm I believe that cannabis is. You know, I live in Florida. We've got medicinal here, um, and um, where in Florida are you, buddy? Where? I'm in St. Pete, Florida, Tampa. Okay. Yeah, and so. Um, Canapreneur, uh, uh, we just had a nice little story in Forbes uh, magazine the other day. And, and um, it's a real deal that my partner in that company is, he comes, he's comes out of uh, uh, big time hedge fund money management and, and, and that world. And so um, there are some tremendous opportunities and we're, we're in on the ground floor of some, some pretty cool things right now, not just the plant side of it, but um, 
there's many other sides of, you know, there's software, artificial intelligence. We're, we're in the vending machine business, by the way. I mean, we, we can put a vending machine inside a cannabis store and, and it turns great profits, pays for itself in a, in a matter of months. Mm. Interesting. And in terms of, you think cannabis gets legalized federally this next cycle, next year or so? What do you think? You know, I, I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I would hope that it does, but um, what, what do you think? I mean, I'll throw it back at you. Uh, I'm- I think it does, by the way. I think it does. I think, um, I think it should. I think that um, I don't particularly like, you know, listen, I mean, I'll, I mean, if I, listen, I get paranoid if I smoke like really the, the stuff that we grew up with was very different. It's like <laughs> the stuff now. So the CBD side of it um, is, you know, intrigues me. I've used it and I've had some benefits from it. Um, you know, every once in a while, if I smoke in the, in the right circumstance, it's fun. But if you got to be really careful with how much you smoke now, because the stuff is like, wow. I mean, it's like, it's really strong. So like, you know, you could be end up in like primal scream mode in a diaper in the corner, like just, ah, you know, it's, just, it's pretty bad, you know? So, but I, you know, I think that some, it's interesting because I, some people just love it. And obviously there's a massive, demand for it. And I think in all things being equal, um, it's far less dangerous than alcohol or vast majority of the prescription drugs that are being, you know, doled out every day by doctors all across the world. So uh, I think it's a, it's a relatively benign thing. And I think it, it got a bad rap for reasons that I still find laughable. When I look back at some of the old, you know, movies like Reefer Madness, and you just see this insane um, take that the government put on, on marijuana. So, you know, I, I think it's a good thing that's happening I've, I've dabbled i've considered you know putting a brand out there myself with it because my obviously it's a good match to, to my market i've been approached many times and i was always looking for the right sort of situation i thought really was congruent with my brand so if i you know so, so i'm working on that sort of stuff but i again i think i think now is the time though i think I, I think it was early a few years back because you know the all things what do you do with the money you know, and I don't want to get involved with all the cash stuff. I just, you know, my life, I need that stuff, right? The whole night, right? So that's why I shy of it. I think now it's fine. The problem with, you know, with the cash is being solved. And as soon as it gets federally legal, I think it's going to be about brands. What brands, you know, that you have that allow you to really stand out? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, if you look at the model of opening um, um, a dispensary, what you real estate, you know, some of the commercial real estate is, 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 a little bit depressed right now with 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 COVID because retail stores are closing, so there's a lot of space available. But we're we're able to go in and buy a piece of property at a distressed price, and and now because it's going to be cannabis, it's the value all of a sudden is going to go higher. So we're able to to borrow against all of this for leaseholds and. And now, you know, sort of in a, in, a, in a not a lot of cash type situation, able to open nice dispensaries, um, uh, getting support from, uh, uh, from uh, you know, uh, financial institutions and, sure. and have the upside. And these things are grossing 10, 15 million bucks um, and thrown mm-hmm. off great cash flow. So, so it's, you know, we, 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 we've, been, we've done quite a few of those. And, um, and so if, if at the right time, if you're interested, my partner in Canapreneur is Boston based, but very sophisticated guy. I think, I, th- I think it like, um, uh, like, like the, yeah. the, the ideas he's got. So we could- well, I was just approached by someone. I want to, I'll tell you probably, so probably not for public consumption yet. Um, but I was approached by a very big player in the space to do a branding deal with, you know, the Wolf of Wall Street and so on and so forth. And, uh, and, um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm considering it for the first time because I, I, I was just very concerned about like that with the federally, you know, it's being federally illegal for some, for me, it's an issue. Like for most people, it's not an issue for me. I didn't want to get involved with now. I think it's the time. Um, in terms of, how about you have kids? I've got two boys. Um, uh, one's 32. He's been with me. He graduated from Penn state. I, I used to, I lived in Philly before I came here. So that was my first wife. And he's a, he's a rock star. He's, uh, uh, he runs all my uh, um, operations of the, um, of, of all the product side of the business. And um, so, yeah, he, he got out of Penn State, joined me. Um, he ran askseamantv.com for, for a number of years. And, um, and then I, I had to move 
here to Florida. He lived up in the Northeast up there, moved here for a couple of years to get boot camped and learn all the, all the different from the production side to the sourcing sure. side to the manufacturing, everything. And so, um, so now he's back in New York, lives up in Long Island. I got two grandkids. Uh, Where in Long Island? Four and two. So uh, and I got a 22 year old here in town also. Where in Long Island? Uh, he's in uh, Plainview. Oh. Yeah. My old stomping grounds, yeah. Did you? Oh, really? Oh, right. Okay. Well, not Plainview, but just Long Island. You know, it was a long, you know, yeah, Long Island. He 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 got a he built a new home, uh, bought bought some land and built a new house up there. So he's he's doing he's doing well. For exit forty nine, exit forty nine on the Long Island Expressway, Plainview Road. Okay, <laughs> I'll ask. Him. That's the exit, huh? Hey, right. so that's the exit. Yeah. Talk a little bit about mentoring. You know, and I, I, my new book that's coming out is actually ah, that's what, yeah. Men, mentor. It's men, mentor to millions. Okay. And the millions isn't about millions of dollars. It's about the impact that a mentor can bring to the table and, and the really, we call it the exponential uh, kind of effect that a mentor can bring, much like I experienced. So, uh, so this book is about a journey that I'm the mentor and that my co-author is Mark Tim and he's the mentee. And so it's about a journey that Mark and I have and he, and he has a magical transformation through this journey. And so, um, and, and, it, and it's, it's about, you know, we, we talk about how to get a mentor, how to find a mentor, uh, what to look for in a mentor, how to be the mentor's best student if you are a mentee, because so many times, you know, a mentor puts a lot of time and effort into somebody, and, and then they check in a week or two, a month later, hey, how'd it go? Oh, you know what? Great ideas, just haven't had a chance to, to get cracking on any of that stuff yet. It's like, okay, I'm out. You know, so um, we're getting a good buzz on the book and- um, It's out right now? Is it out yet? It, it, it launched, it's Hay House is the publisher and it'll be out September 22nd. And so for an $18 book, we, we, and, and um, we can give a website at a point if you like, but uh, for an $18 book, we give people a 30 day free mentoring program, myself and Mark Tim, it, we're doing live sessions, we've got videos. Um, so people that buy the book are actually going to actually go through the whole mentoring process mm. with us. Love it. What's, the, what's the website? Tell me the website. Do you have the website to go? KevinMentor.com. And there's about a thousand dollars worth of giveaways uh, if, if you buy an $18 book. So, um, so we're, 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 we're crushing it out there so far in the market. Amazon's excited. And, uh, you know, there's, it, you, when you wrote, you wrote your book, right? Was that, was it a New York Times bestseller? Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's not easy doing that. You know, I mean, yeah. it's, it, 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 thank God, God bless you, man. That, that is one to, I, I've had a couple of books. None of them have hit that kind of status. So uh, I don't think yeah. a lot of people realize how difficult that is. It's, it is a, is a really difficult process to get that. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. So I had, um, I've written three, um, two were number ones and then one got lost in the GFC. Like I, I published one like the day after Lehman Brothers went bust and like it, it just like got swallowed up and, and everything was just the financial crisis. But the other two did great. I, got, I, mean, I got lucky with the movie, so I, I can't complain. What can I say? Yeah. Right. Listen, buddy, you are awesome. Um, as always, it's great to talk to you. Everyone check out. Kevin's new book, KevinMentor.com. It is definitely worth the read. I could promise you that because I know when Kevin does something, he does it right. And he is a mentor's mentor for sure. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, man. Good seeing you. Take care, Jordan. Take care, pal. Bye. All right, here's the deal. As America gets back to work, you want and need every possible advantage out there to succeed in the new economy. Smart companies run on NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud-based business system. So receive your free guide right now at netsuite.com slash wolf. That is netsuite.com slash wolf. All right, real quick, listen, if you're a CEO, you're a sales manager, or you're involved in hiring for your company, I want you to check out my new organization, Straight Line Hiring. What we do is we deliver expertly trained salespeople to companies like yours. World-class salespeople trained by me and delivered to you on demand. Go to my website, jordanbelfort.com. Check out Straight Line Hiring, the only way to grow your company with certainty.